Welcome back. Well, we've all heard about the crimes of the banksters, but how much do we really know? You know, sort of like the old fire sign theater thing about, you know, you, you, you think you know what's going on, but everything you know is wrong. Could it be that everything we know is wrong about uh, the banksters and the housing situation in the United States? Lynn Simoniak is with us. She's an attorney, president, and founder of the Housing Justice Foundation. The website is thjf.org, as in the Housing Justice Foundation, thjf.org. And Lynn, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Uh, your mortgage documents are fake? <laughs> well, yes, they probably are. Um, and, and that applies to pretty much everybody who's listening or watching right now. That's especially true if you refinanced or got a mortgage any time uh, from 2004 through 2008, which is the era of uh, extreme securitization in America. This is when the banksters were running wild. So. Absolutely, and uh, to this day we don't have a handle on just how wild they were running. Mm -hmm. and we know vaguely that they caused the crash of the American economy, but when you ask anyone um, for some real specifics about uh, mortgage-backed trusts, securitization, uh, all these bundles of mortgages that investors purchased, uh, most people have very little idea of uh, what this was, despite the fact that it was the major driver of our economy and our economic collapse. Right. So what did you learn and how did you learn it, and why did you learn it? Well, what I learned was that uh, Wall Street was so busy buying mortgages and bundling them into investments for uh, that they would register with the SEC that a lot of the things that were promised to investors uh, regarding safeguarding of the loan documents were never fulfilled. So uh, one of the things that I discovered was that um, just the extent of the problem. In 2006 alone, uh, Wall Street made over a thousand of these bundles and you have to understand each bundle had about 5,000 mortgages in it, and it was quite common for the total amount of the mortgages to be about a billion dollars. Um, I believe that the total amount of mortgage debt securitized just in 2006, how many loans did we put into these packages, uh, was close to a trillion dollars, $885 billion in one year, wow. which is uh, equivalent to one-tenth of the U.S. total mortgage debt. So we were a train going down a track we had never been on before, and we were going as fast as we possibly could to make now, these products. You learned this because of your own personal experience with the banksters, is that right? Yes. I, Tell us I about used that. to say, uh, I've had a settlement since then, but I used to say my name is Lynn Simoniak and I'm in foreclosure, like it was the beginning of an AA meeting because mm -hmm. so many people are so ashamed of their financial situation that they would never admit that they were in foreclosure. But I felt like I came to mind very honestly. My uh, economic situation was uh, really brought on first by my own illness where I was unable to work for a couple of years because of a fight with cancer a long time ago, 12 years ago. But then, um, like millions of other Americans, I had an elderly mother, she was 86 years old, who uh, was no longer able to care for herself. She had Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and I moved her in with my into my household and began taking care of her with my children, uh, which is a very common scenario, but it, that's related to our health care situation in this country. Uh, and eventually I got to the point where it was very difficult for me to make my mortgage payment, and then I my loan adjusted. I had an adjustable rate mortgage. My loan adjusted. I felt that it had adjusted on an improper date, um, because I had read the mortgage documents and knew what two months it could adjust on, and they missed the adjustment date. And rather than wait for their next opportunity under the contract, uh, they decided that I would just go. They would go ahead and adjust it the following month. Right. And I protested that and said, "No, no. The contract says your opportunity is March and September. You missed, right. and therefore you have to wait till September." And they said, "Well, now you owe us a late fee." Uh huh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And you're, but you're a lawyer. You know how to read a contract, so you're pretty sure you were right. Yeah, I was pretty sure I was right. I am a lawyer. I do. Not, I've, I've been practicing law for 34 years, and mm. the contract was pretty plain. They had two dates which right. they could adjust, and they missed an adjustment date, uh, which is not uncommon, uh, especially since the servicing rights to mortgages were being transferred uh, very, very rapidly around the country. So when I said, no, I'm not going to pay this additional $1,000 a month, uh, then three months later I was sued for foreclosure. But the the surprise to me was who sued me. I had been paying Option 1 Mortgage Company. I would gotten my mortgage through Option 1, but I was sued by somebody called Deutsche Bank National Trust Company as trustee for Soundview Home Loan Trust 2006 OPT1. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is that? I mean, and I had some financial savvy about me. I'd worked in the insurance industry and uh, I'd worked in banking a little bit, and I had no idea what that was. And in that regard, I am also like tens of thousands of Americans who are suddenly sued by a trust that they never knew owned their mortgage. Mm-hmm. So you tried to track down, we just have a couple minutes left here, Lynn. So you tried to track down who actually owned your mortgage, and it turned out that that was pretty hard to do, and they started faking documents and throwing them at you. Right. You know, like everyone else, I got the allegations, we have your note, we had your note, we lost your note. And then 18 months later, uh, what we call the aha movement, m- moment, we found your note, and we not only found it, we found an endorsement. We found a mortgage assignment, and that's how I discovered this woman, Linda Green, which was just a name used by a mortgage servicing company, you know, by at least 20 different people signing names on mortgage documents. One of these robo sign. Thanks. Right, creating yeah. documents just out of thin air that, th- that should have been safeguarded in trust. Years now, earlier. this is a crime. Forging a document is a crime. Did, did, the, did this bank or anybody at this bank go to jail? Well, as a matter of fact, probably the one of the few people in the, the industry to go to jail, uh, the president of this company, Lorraine O'Reilly Brown, was sentenced to five years uh, two months ago, and she's now wow. uh, in a camp fed. Uh, she also was sentenced to, I think, two to 20 years in Michigan for racketeering for the same crime. But you know, it, it is as if Deutsche Bank had no idea that any of this was going on. Well, right. of course they did, because banks, uh, judges in Ohio and other states were throwing their cases out left and right, saying you can't prove you own the mortgage. Right. Uh, and Deutsche Bank so, has never been brought to task, so, has never been made answerable for using any of these documents. So the carry home message, Lynn, we're, we're, we're at our last minute here. We're talking with Lynn Simoniak, president and founder of the Housing Justice Foundation, uh, TH. FJ.org. What should people do if they're f- having problems with their banks and they suspect that the bank doesn't actually even know who owns their document? Well, they, they need to send a demand letter to the, to the servicers explaining that they need copies of these documents. They need to go into their official county records. There are some uh, terrific county recorders, Jeff Thigpen and John O'Brien. Both have websites. Both explain these kinds of frauds and document fraud. Do you have information about this on your website, Lynn? Themselves. Do you have information about this on your website? I sure do. And, you know, there's, uh, there's others. There's Foreclosure Hamlet, uh, Foreclosure Fraud. So there are websites around uh, MS Fraud. There are websites around the country that talk about all these issues and how to identify fraudulent documents. But most likely, you have a fraudulent mortgage assignment, and most likely, your note was never endorsed by the person who should have endorsed it. Amazing. Amazing. If you got a mortgage between 2004 and 2008. Yes. Lynn Simoniak, check out her website, THJF, as in The Housing Justice Foundation, thjf.org.org. Lynn, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Tom. Keep up the great work. Keep spreading the word. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Wow. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps over a million phony mortgages out there right now. Yours might be one of them. 